Kenny Chuan Nakamai, I'm your host, Logan 23. You're joining me for Chapters Interactive Stories, The Weight of the World, Chapter 2. Setting name for our Earthling, that's Naomi. It's a bright springtime morning, and your family farm is at the height of beauty. A few puffy clouds meander overhead, casting just the right amount of shade on your favorite resting spot. You hear the faint echo of your best friend calling your name in the distance. Naomi! Wake up! Naomi! Naomi, hey! You can't just sleep out here all day! It's so warm out. I'll... Hmm... Keep sleeping. Get up. Okay, quit. Quit shouting at me. I wouldn't have to shout if you didn't sleep like a log! I was just... Having such a good dream, though. Could, like, monsters attacking the town? Or could, like, aliens stealing you away? What? Is that the kind of stuff you dream about? Nah, I usually just dream I forgot to wear pants to school, or that my... I called the teacher mom. I don't think you have to worry about that. Mr. Lee doesn't look like... look anything like your mom. You only think that because you've never seen her without makeup. I promise they could be twins. I swear it said Mr. Lee. Yeah, Mr. Lee. Or because I haven't seen Mr. Lee in a dress before. Well, maybe he's got one on right now and we're missing it because I had to come find you all the way out here in the middle of nowhere. It's... Too nice of a day to be stuck in school, anyways. Good riddance. We can't skip school, Naomi! Just the two of us is nearly half the class! Oh, you know I'm kidding. Let's get going. You hop up from the patch of soft grass and brush the dirt off your dress. Top layer of dirt, at least. You could scrub it for a few weeks straight and the dingy cloth would still be in tatters. School clothes, play clothes, it's all the same when money's tight and boy is it ever tight. The two of you set off down the road. That money tight feeling? Yeah. I know them feels. We don't. You wheeze. <sighs> I have to run. Your lungs burn with the effort and your legs feel like a white hot noodles. But somehow you're still flying forward along the beaten path. You... Jerk! Mika's frantic sprinting fades to a light jog and he looks over his shoulder at you. Only a slowpoke says stuff like that. Do you want to hear Mr. Lee go on and on about how? He puts on his best Mr. Lee impression, complete with a calm, even voice and careful half smile as both of you reach the schoolhouse door. It's better to be three hours early, too early. A tall figure swoops up behind Meek as he rounds the doorway, but there's no time to warn him. Then a little minute late. You're absolutely right, Mika. I'll have to take my own advice next time. Eleven kids collapse into a fit of giggles. The entire class, not including Mika. He slinks his way to the front of the room, his beet red face glowing with shame. Luckily, the novelty of seeing the ever-punctual Mr. Lee stumbling through the door at 9.05 is much more intriguing than yet another of Mika's blunders. The room falls quiet as Mr. Lee strolls to the chalkboard. You take your seat and settle in as he clears his throat. Now that we're all here and ready to learn, let's get started. Good morning, class! Good morning, Mr. Lee! rings out. Back at his queue, the student's voice is a catacomb of excited shrieks and sleepy groans. Does anyone have questions about last night's homework? The homework was tough, but uh, what I should really ask is... Why he's late? Raise your hand and try to get Mr. Lee's attention. Yes, Naomi. Where were you doing before the bell rang. Let's see here. No, I 
don't think I see anything about me on last night's homework. Are you sure you're writing the right page? The entire class groans at once. He notori notoriously for dodging personal questions like this. Ever since he arrived in town, the mysterious Mr. Lee has been tight-lipped about his life. You can see him hiding a smile as he coughs into the crook of his arm. Please tell us, Mr. Lee. You will always get to lecture us if we're late, so what do we get if you're late? You're the one always saying, this one room school is too small for secrets, right? Oh, no. When did I become mother hen to such sneaky hatchlings? I'm ashamed to call myself a good teacher if all you've learned is how to tease poor old geezers like me. He pretends to turn away in shame, but you hear the gentle scritch of chalk tapping on the blackboard. He steps aside and you see he's drawn a few pictures, a hammer, nails, a ruler, a shovel, and some wooden boards, a thick pencil, and a saw. Here's a question for all of you. How many of you think this is enough tools for any good kite? I'll never put one together myself before. The hands shoot up from across the room, and your classmates chime in with approvals. The teacher coughs once more and adjusts the color of his shirt before pressing on the chat. Okay. If everyone agrees, let's solve a problem I've been having. Using only these tools on the board, can anyone show me how to build a nice, strong fence around school? <clears throat> a few kids squirm in their seats, making for, waiting for someone to step up. Finally, a younger boy from the back of the row raises his hand. He explains how to use the shovel to dig holes for the fence posts, a saw and ruler to trim the boards to size, and the hammer and nails to finally pen it all together. The class seems satisfied with his answer, but you wonder if there's more to the question. The teacher might be a city slicker, but... Just about everyone can figure out how to build a fence. Great job! The schoolyard has needed a nice fence around it for a while now. But once I've nailed it all together, how will I get to our front door? Mr. Lau, can't you just walk through the gate? I could if I had one, but we only talked about a fence, right? Who can tell me how to add a gate? Man, Mr. Li Lee, you've got to get out more. For the gate, all we'll use is some boards and the hammer and hinges. A nice metal latch so you can lock it. Mr. Lee's face brightens and you know he's about to turn his this around somehow but you can't help but smile anyways when he puts on a laughably fake look of confusion. But I don't have any of these things in my toolkit. Do you see hinges or a latch on the board? You glance around the room to find a sea of confused faces. Well, not a sea so much as a puddle. There would need to be a few more students for it to even be called a pond. Finally, Mr. Lee... Cover, clears his throat to break the silence. Well, looks like I'll have to add a new tool to my kit. Now I have a bigger problem to solve. But what if my problem is even bigger than that? Could I use only some small set of tools to fix anything, Naomi? This is definitely a trick question, but I'm not falling for it this time. Also, that he can't use those tools to fix a broken heart. What if you broke someone's heart, Mr. Lee? None of those tools could help you f with that. Are you calling a teacher a heartbreaker? You sound like my mom and their friends when they come over for supper. The class erupts in cheers, and the girls pretending to swoon, and the boys all laughing, laughing and whooping. You join in and start making kissy faces, but when you look up, you see Mr. Lee is still smiling calmly, not rattled at all by your clever reply. That's absolutely right, kids. 
You all thought my toolkit was fine only a few minutes ago, but when you think about it, don't I need a few more things? There are a lot of things out there that need fixing, like broken hearts. But if you don't keep adding new tools to your collection, you might never find the right one for the job. Like a nice gift and some flowers and some tissues. Sure, if every problem has a solution, then everything broken can be fixed. And if you have a great idea waiting to come to life, you'll need the right tools to craft it. But how will we know what new tools to use or where to find them? And even if we've got them all, how do we learn how to use them? From a teacher, of course. But you said yourself that you didn't know how to build a fence. So the class taught me. Today you were all my teacher, and I got to add a f new tool to my collection thanks to you. So, if we want to fix a big problem or build something new, but we don't know how, we gotta learn from someone else? That's just easy, Mr. Lee. You could have just told us it like that. Ah, the most important lesson I hope you learn at my school isn't what tools you need, where to find them, or even how to use them. Then what is it? The courage to never stop looking for something broken in this world and trying to fix it. Glassfall silence as the weight of his words sink in. On that note, how about we break for early recess? Come back in 15 minutes and make sure your toolbox has space. Today's next lesson will be a big one. Everyone groans at your goofy teacher, but you all notice that the class seems calmer somehow, like they're each carrying a heavy, invisible load on their shoulders. During recess, you all try to brainstorm new ways to stay one step ahead of Mr. Lee's crafty lesson. How about next time he says something weird, we all just make fart sounds until he starts laughing and can't keep lecturing. He presses his hands to his face and blows a huge raspberry. To the delight of your classmates, one boy laughs so hard he snorts like a pig, sending half of the class into even wilder fits of giggles. Gross. I've got a better idea. We should... We'll just try... Make a quit it. I'm just saying, the Mika technique has a 100% rate so far. Uh, boys, anyway, what we should do is trick him into telling us about his past or convince Mr. Lee to let us do something fun. Look, guys, I heard that. There's a comet passing over tonight. If we tell Mr. Lee about how much we'd love to learn about outer space and the stars, he'll he'll have to let us watch it. I get it. If he says yes, it means we get to spend the rest of the day outside. The rest of the class chimes in with approval, and you work together to come up with a plan. Mr. Lee calls for the class, but... Before you can put your plan into motion, he does something completely unexpected. He picks up a piece of chalk and drags it across the board. When he steps aside, the board reads, Comet Viewing Party. The energy of the entire room shoots up a level and you hear excited gossip with the, from the crowd. Mika turns to you with, with some of his own. Hey, were we going to try and get him to do this? Do you think this means we all get to stay here until night instead of going home and doing chores? I hope so. Alright, class, settle down. I know this was going to get a big reaction, but I didn't know it would be this exciting for you all. In a few minutes, I'll release you for the day. But after the sun goes down, I want each of you to make your way back here for a special nighttime class. Something pretty amazing is happening in the sky, and I want you all to be here when it does. He coughs lightly before setting up the 
final plans for the night. The students are to provide a snack to share with the class and traveling groups of four to ensure a safe walk to the schoolhouse. With that, he sets the class free and you and Mika rush home to prepare for the night. Night, fall shorts, sh night falls shortly after you finish your evening chores and your group makes their way back to the schoolhouse. Yeesh, it's cold out. I should have brought a jacket. Look, Mr. Lee's already out here. Do you think he lives close by? I don't know what to think about Mr. Lee anymore. He's so odd today. Once the entire class has arrived, a few stragglers taking longer than most to make it up the long path in the darkness, Mr. Lee passes out the snacky bra. The cups of hot cocoa or chip didn't mismatch, but everyone is thrilled for the special treat on this breezy night. As the clouds part, Mr. Lee finally begins his lesson. You can't see it now, class, but in a few minutes, something amazing will happen. Is the world can end? No, Mika, but the world will seem very small for a moment. When you see the comet overhead, I want you to think about how far away it is, how big it is, and how far it's traveled in that great big universe out there. I should ask where the comet came from, when the comet will come back, how fast the comet is going, where it came from. How did the comet get here, Mr. Lee? Great question, Naomi. Comet circled the sun, just like Earth, so... Come on, Mr. Lee, are you really going to make us spend the whole night learning this stuff? Well, if you don't want something as important as the laws of the entire universe in your toolbox class, I suppose your dear old teacher will understand. The whole group lights up at the thought of something so big and exciting as a rule for the entire universe, and the cheering and plating is music to Mr. Lee's ears. He chuckles and coughs once more, actually, now that you notice it, he seems a bit paler than usual. The incredible scientist Isaac Newton discovered some special facts about how movement works in our universe. In honor of his discovery, we call them Newton's Laws of Motion. He whip out a notepad and start jotting down the facts as the sky begins to brighten. The comet you're about to see, just like you, moves through the universe without ever breaking these fundamental laws of nature. He inhales suddenly and coughs. You notice his body trembling slightly with the force of it. Some of the kids start to whisper, but your teacher writes himself and carries on with the lesson. Now, Newton's first law of motion tells us that a body at rest will remain at rest, and a body in motion will remain in motion. He gasps for a breath for a moment and coughs again, his hacking echoing loudly across the field. He still has his face buried in the crook of his elbow, as the comet finally dips into sight just above the clouds, its brightness filling the night sky and illuminating the acres of crisp grass below. The rest of the class looks on and all, shouting and laughing at the sight of the comet streaming overhead. But all you see is Mr. Lee fighting for breath, his chest heaving with effort as he backs away from the crowd. Teacher, are you all right? Hey, be quiet, you guys. Mr. Lee, what's wrong? Do you want some of my hot cocoa? How about water? We can run to the well and grab some. As the other students take notice of their teacher, he holds up one hand to reassure them that he's okay while the other continues to cover his coughing. Instead of relief overtaking the group, you're all suddenly gripped with fear. His outstretched hand, gleaming from the light of the comet above, is covered with bright red blood. You scream as Mr. Lee collapses to the ground. Maybe Mika was right all along. Maybe the comet did bring the end of the world with it. It's very sad. Um, that being said, I hope y'all did enjoy. Like I said, it would be quite a, um, a different chapter from chapter one. And, um, Complete role reversal. We went from fun space exploration, and space fighting to uh, 
real life problems, didn't we? That being said, if y'all did enjoy, please feel free to like, comment, share, or subscribe. Also head down to the description below. You can follow me on social media, or if you want to support my content, there's a couple links for that as well. And until next time, stay well, stay awesome, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.